everyone and welcome to Bookish with Mix and Bella, um, the podcast where we read fairy porn and tell you all about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> How are you, Mix? What's going on? Um, I'm good. Not much. Been pretty cruisy. Just reading a gig- ginormous book. It felt big, didn't it? It was, it was a tough read, I feel like, this mm-hmm. one. Anyway, how's your week been? Or weeks? Um, well, I'm sick. So, <laughs> yay! Oh, and it's your birthday. Oh, but we're yeah. ignoring that. We ignore that. We're ignoring that. Because <laughs> if you ignore it, then you don't age. Hundred percent. How did you find the book? What, did you did you read it quickly? Was it hard to get through? It took me a lot longer than the second one. Yeah, like it took me an entire week. A lot happened, and I feel like I every f- time I came back to it, I had to remember what 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 was going on. Because it was so full on. Yes. But at the same time, there are a lot of parts that lagged a bit, I think. There was, yeah, there's a lot of the bits where I kind of had to, like, push myself through it. Yes. Just, yeah. Even, like, the ending, I kind of just had to go, okay, let's just keep going. We're almost there. Yes. No, same. Same, same. Mm. Have we even said what book we've read? Probably not. No, we're not professionals. We are totes professional. <laughs> well, this is the third installment of our Sarah J Maas series. A Court of Wings and Ruin. Is this the last one in the trilogy? And then there's just two random books afterwards? I think so. I don't know whether, because there's the novella, which we're reading next, yep. and then there's the, the fourth one. I don't know whether that's meant to be like the start of the next trilogy or what. Oh. Because from what I read, there's two more books and another novella. Oh, okay. So potentially. I hope it doesn't end on a cliffhanger. That would suck. Yes. Because then you have to wait, and I don't like waiting. Me neither. And we have to wait for like years. I feel like because this one only yeah. just that one only yes. just came out this year, didn't it, or last year? Yeah, and she's like she's also writing another series at the same time. So oh, calm down, one at a time. I know. <laughs> Finish something before you start something else. That's what my mum always told me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when you have like that much hype around your book, you kind of, or even just around yourself, you kind of want to get stuff out there. That's true. Before the hype. Hype dies. Yeah. Well, they, oh, this one's been going strong for a while. Mm, that's true. I, so I guess she's at the point where she can just do whatever she wants. Yeah. Who are we to judge? That's what we do, though. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the whole podcast is. That's right. Us judging books. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us what the book's about? Yes. Okay. Let me get on to the Goodreads. All right, here we go. A Court of Wings and Ruin, which is A Court of Thorns and Roses number three. Feyre will bring vengeance. Dun, dun, dun. She has left the night court and her high lord and is playing a deadly game of deceit. In the spring court, Tamlin is making deals with the invading king, threatening to bring Prithian to its knees, and Feyre is determined to uncover his plans. But to do so, she must weave a web of lies and one slip may spell doom. Not only for Feyre, but for her world as well. As mighty armies grapple for power, Feyre must decide who to trust amongst the dazzling and lethal High Lords and hunt for allies in unexpected places. But while war rages, it is her heart that will face the greatest battle. The thrilling third book in number one New York Times best-selling fantasy series from Sarah J Maas. Woo. Wait, what? Her heart? <laughs> That's what it says. It says, in all capitals... <laughs> So I probably should be shouting. It says, but while war rages, it is her it is her heart that will face the greatest battle. I didn't I didn't pick that up. <laughs> That's not what I got from it. Well, mm-mm. maybe that bit at the end. Unless it's to do with like her, her like more with her sisters. Being away from her family. Yeah. Let's see, where are we at? Oh, that's right. So at the end of the last book, there was that big, like, mind fuck. Yes, the huge, that was a huge cliffhanger. Yes. With the cauldron, the sisters went in the cauldron, they became fairies. Mm Mm-hmm. And she went back with Tamlin, but she was already made the High Lady of the Night Court, and she still had that bond with Recent, even though they think it's been severed. Yes. So we're starting off that yeah okay we're starting off in the spring court oh i have i have a chapter guide how about i just read that (laughs) yes do the do the chapter guide okay let's do it you ready Mm -hmm. i'm so ready 
<clears throat> Feyre is with Tamlin in the spring court, pretending to be the saved damsel that they believe her to be. They don't know that she's the high lady of the night court. She attends a meeting with Ianthe, whom she hates for betraying her sisters, and Tamlin announces that Hyben will be moving their forces into the spring court. Durian arrives along with the Hyben twins, Branna and Dagden. Feyre, Lucy and Durian and the twins inspect holes in the wall that keeps their forces from entering human lands. Feyre arranges for the sun to shine on herself instead of Ianthe at the summer solstice ceremony. This marks her as blessed to the people. After a nightmare, Feyre goes to Lucian, and they embrace. Tamlin walks in, making his own assumptions. Dun, dun, dun. So that was kind of a um, brief summary of chapter one to five. Yep. So one to five, I was kind of thinking, so uh, I wonder if she's going to tell Lucian what's going on. Because mm -hmm. um, I felt like his connection to Elaine would make him an ally. Yes. Also, Tamlin's a dick. Yes. I had that in my notes too. <laughs> what a coincidence. Oh my God. Yay. Actually, mine says um, T is pathetic, <laughs> but close. Yes, yes. Um, I really like the banter between Durian and Feyre, um, and then I hope she ends up ripping him to pieces. I dislike him with a passion. And Ian. <laughs> I, I almost kept calling her Ian in that because that's how I read Ian. it. We should just refer to her as Ian, Ian. from now on. <laughs> Ian, I love it. Oh dear, I, I felt like I felt like it was setting her up to have a lot of allies in the spring court. Setting her up to have um, allies. Yeah, so like he kind of felt like Lucian was kind of mm. you know eventually going to turn to be on her side, and then her what's the other chick's name? Like the uh, Alice. Oh, Alice, whatever? the servant or the lesser yeah. fairy. Yes, yes. Um, Ian's a bitch. Yes. And then she's just kind of like fucking with everyone. Um, Fairy is just kind of, you know, messing with people. It was great. Like that was a really good couple of chapters. I, I liked that she was starting to do that. That was fun. Yeah. Um, what have I got here? I put Ian is annoying as fuck. Cause she is mm -hmm. prissing around trying to be like, Oh, look at me. I'm amazing. Yes. Yeah. So I was questioning the twins. The mind readers, whatever they're called, Drake yeah. Bond. Nope, don't know what it's called. Are they the Highburn King's children? This is what I was questioning. I don't then know. I did find out later on, but they didn't really explain where they came from. No. Also, we found out in this section that Tamlin made Lucian do the sex ceremony with Ian even though we knew that Ian yes. forced herself on him previously, and Tamlin knew that as well. So Tamlin's being a dick, not just to Feyre, but to Lucian as well. Yeah, that was horrible. It made me feel really sad for Lucian. Mm. And I'm hoping, I was hoping that they would become allies a bit quicker than maybe what they did or what they were becoming to be. Yes. Um, but I liked that we were starting to see Feyre's plan in there. Yeah, because I feel like the ending of the last book with, like, it kind of mentioned Lucian's, like, suspicions. Yes, he was never convinced completely. Yeah, so I was hoping that would, like, kind of be straight into, like, he'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, but, and then she'd be like, like haha. Ha. Yeah, but he, he kind of just let it, let it play out, I guess. Yeah, interesting. I was curious mm -hmm. when Feyre started to come on to Lucian a bit. Yes. To to get into people's heads. I was thought that was for Tamlin's benefit so that he would keep his hands off of her or something. I don't know. Yeah. That didn't click for me because I was like, why are you using Lucian? Yeah. Like don't don't be like that. Don't stoop to that level. So that didn't click for me until later. Yeah. It was um it was weird. It was. It didn't really feel right. Mm. But it did, and we'll get to that, I think. Let's move on. Chapters 6 to 10. All right. Feyre wins the affection of Tamlin's men by siding with them against Ianthe. Everything she is orchestrating puts a wedge between Tamlin and his people. Ianthe announces that the land around her temple is dying and that she intends to find the cause. 
Three children of the blessed are caught trying to cross the wall, but Feyre scares them away. The next day, Feyre and Lucian find the bodies torn to pieces by the Hyben twins. Alice tells Feyre that she's going to the summer court. Feyre learns that the cauldron will be used to collapse the wall. She decides to return to the night court. As she is leaving, she sees Yante abusing Lucian. Feyre makes Yante smash her own hand with a rock. The Hyben twins approach and reveal that they have been poisoning Feyre's powers since they arrived, but Feyre is still able to defeat them. Nice. The twins? Really messed up. Messed up people. They did, and I'm surprised that they died. I know, I felt like that was just so like quick and just like yeah. right on the board. I, I thought that because of the attention that they were getting, that they would be in it for a lot longer. Mm. We also no, didn't hear a lot kinda... about Durian. No. During that, he was just kind of hanging about. He was just there. He was there for a good time. And I also thought it was interesting that because the twins are high fae, right? Mm hmm. If they're Highburn's children or family relations of some description. Yeah. So why then are they eating humans? Yeah, that was really weird. Like, I understand that they're just, like, they're just shitty bad people. Mm. But it just it just felt like a bit of overkill. And then to have them just, like, die the next chapter after they did all these horrible things, it was just like, okay, well, what was the point? Yeah. Ooh. In my notes, I've got, is Durian sympathetic to humans? Something must have happened Ooh. that made me question that. Oh, I remember because he was trying to, um, when they were at the kind of, at the wall, he was, he thanked... Feyre for like letting them oh, go. Oh, that's right. That was and weird. then the twins just went and got them anyway. And ate them. Then, yes. then they ate them. Mm hmm. I feel like Feyre orchestrated the fall of the Spring Court very well. Yes. Um, because, and I don't think it says it in the chapter guide, but the way that she pitted everyone against Tamlin and Iante and then blamed everything on them so that anything that yes. happened would be put back on them which would make all of their guards and servants and whoever else lived in the spring court to just completely lose faith in them and so the court fell from the inside out yeah i have a note here saying really good escape plan very well set up um the only downside was that ian was in the woods trying to force herself on lucian oh i'm glad she got what she but, deserved with that yeah it was very satisfying. It was. Because she was made to crush her hand repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And then to the point where it wouldn't be ever fixed. So I have a note here. Mm -hmm. um, when Lucian decided to, decided to go with... Um, I, I knew that was going to happen. I knew they were going to go together. <laughs> yes, yes. So did I. <laughs> um, I have a note saying, I hope his mechanical eye has the power to see through shit or something. As and he knew what was going, what she was doing the entire time. Oh. Which, as we kind of find out later. It is magical. Mm -hmm. I wish we would have been told that earlier. Like, even yes. in a previous book. Yeah. Because he's just kind of like a floater character, I feel like. Yeah. I've just written down that um, I hope that Lucian realizes what the Spring Court is doing is wrong, like in regards to Tamlin mainly, and that he ends up joining Reese and his merry men. Oh, uh, Lucian. Yeah. Yeah. I want him to be a part of Robin Hood's crew. Yes, the squad. <laughs> the night squad. <laughs> the squad. <laughs> the holes in the wall, that was interesting too. Yeah. And, and we found out that the holes were because made from points of power. And that's why the cauldron had to be put in one of the holes. Oh, yes. Am I getting ahead of myself? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because they kind of, yeah, they kind of discussed it as they were going, like, investigating them. Yeah. Because one of the holes was where Feyre came through the wall. Yes. So that's interesting. That's very All right. What are we up to now? Chapter 11 to 15? Mm-hmm. Lucian journeys with Feyre to the Night Court in order to see Feyre's sister, Elaine, who is his unrequited mate. On their journey, Lucian and Feyre are captured twice. The second time, they're rescued by Cassian and Azriel. Feyre and Recent are reunited in Valaris. 
Feyre visits the House of Wind where her sisters have been staying. Nesta is angry and Elaine is a shell of herself, depressed and missing her human fiancé. Oh, is that all? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, um, some chapters are so, like, some kind of sections of chapters are so bulky and there's so much happening. And then sometimes you go through five chapters and nothing's really there. Mm. Like my notes um, are literally boring travel stuff, nothing interesting to note, more running, can't we just skip all this? <laughs> Yay, they found her, finally the running is over, sex, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well my notes are a little bit more detailed than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got that they fled through the autumn and winter courts because, and I referenced that because on my Kindle I find it really tricky to go back and look at the map. So I have no idea of the layout of Prithian or anything. Yes. So that's why I'm mentioning where they're going through. So they've gone through autumn and winter. Mm -hmm. And Lucian is from the autumn court. So we find out that magic is useless from the Feybane. That's Feyre's. Yes. Because she was poisoned through the food. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucian's brothers find them at the edge of the autumn court. And I found that interesting that they found them on their way out instead of on their way in or through. It was like right yeah, before they left. It sounded like they kind of got around like the actual, like where the court is. Yeah. And yeah, they were heading out. So whether they kind of picked them, picked them up as they were going around. Maybe. And then started following them. I don't know. Illusion made it seem like it would be very hard to get through because they could see everything everywhere. Yeah. And then they just. And it felt like they let them think that they got through. Yeah. And then it was like, haha, just kidding, we're here to kill you. <laughs> so they have and that then, big yeah. battle on the ice in the winter court. Mm -hmm. And we also found out that Cassian's wings are fine, because I was wondering about that from the battle yeah. previously. He healed completely fine. They get back to the townhouse, and the sisters are at the House of Wind. Yes. And Feyre assumes, and this annoyed me, but she assumes that Rishan would want information first before they had sexy time like Tamlin did remember yeah but he didn't he wanted sexy time and to make sure that she yeah, knew he, he was missed yeah we went straight to the, the fairy sex yeah I thought that was nice that was nice and it it's says <laughs> I've got he wants sexy time and make sure she knows he missed her friendship not just her body and then in parentheses is that even real life <laughs> no no it's not because they're fairies come on mix get with it um so i had a comment saying that i think i like nesta now oh um she, like she's still like a bit bitchy but they're obviously hinting at her and Cass being mates yes which as we know yeah yes i i picked up on that too all right well let's move on to the next chapters then Okay, so we go from 16 to 27. The Night Court Inner Circle has a meeting about Hyben, where they decide that they need to coax Feyre's sisters into fixing the holes in the wall. Feyre trains with Cassian, and Azrael, Azrael agrees to teach her to fly. Reese and Feyre decide to recruit the Bone Carver to help them. The Bone Carver's price is that they bring him the Ouroboros Mirror. Reluctantly, Nesta agrees to help fix the wall, as well as to join them to visit the Court of Nightmares, while the others ask for aid, and Feyre tries to take the mirror. The court's leader, Kier, says he will help the Night Court if he can have access to Valaris. Recent agrees, and Moore is furious that he made this bargain with her kin. Feyre learns that some that look in the mirror lose their mind. She decides not to take the chance. I feel like a lot more happened... In those chapters than just that. There was, I think, yeah. There, there was a lot of, it was more, the, yeah, I've got the notes saying it's all about the kind of the politics of it. Mm. Um, and then um, Amran also starts training Nesta. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, so I have a note that says the war stuff is kind of more interesting than the romance part. Mm -hmm. um, I want Amran and Nesta to become best friends. <laughs> <coughs> yes. That'll never happen. Um, I have a note here. I think this is when she was learning to fly. 
Um, I said, I don't know why, maybe I've watched too many movies, but I imagine the wings popping out of her back covered in fluid or something. Ew. Like alien? <laughs> yeah. Ew. <laughs> you know how sometimes in like um like werewolf movies, how they like kind of shed their skin and it's all like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and oh, so they go into the library. That was the other thing that happened. Oh, yes. Yeah. The big sounds wonderful. Um, library. Yes. With the hole in the middle, which I want to throw people down. <laughs> I've got Nesta and Elaine are not handling being Faye. Nesta is angry and bitter. Elaine is in a very deep depression. Cassian loves Nesta. Elena refuses to meet Lucian. The court is accepting Lucian. Uh, Feyre wants to learn to fly. A meeting between the High Lords is being set up, but Nesta wants nothing to do with it. The Nightmare Steward, Moore's father, that must be Kier. Yeah. Uh, this is a question. Gets to choose whether to fight in the war. I didn't understand why he had an option when Recent is the High Lord of the Night Court. Why does the steward get th- so much control? I think the way it's set up is that they stay like in their kind of mountain court, and then the what is his name, Care dude? Yeah. He kind of has his way around. Like he gets to do whatever he wants, pretty much, as long as they stay there. But from Kier's point of view, from the steward's point of view. Mm-hmm. They don't know about Valaris, or they didn't. No. Well, they so yeah, no. what do they think that Reeson's doing? I don't know, yeah. And so why is – it's just – I found that they didn't explain that quite properly. No. So that messed with my head yeah, a little if bit. He, if he didn't know about the city, then what What kind of – what did Brees have over him to keep them there? Right. Or, or if they're happy to stay there, that's fine. But why can't Reeson just come in and go, okay, I'm taking the armies. Let's go. Yeah. And and then him not be able to do anything about it. But, like, he's allowed to say no. So, essentially, what what other point is there of having a high lord if they're not able to command the people? Yes. That, that irked me. So I made a note. I've got one about the bone carver. I find him very fascinating i want to know more oh me too i liked that and his his whole little family give me more <sighs> i want more details give me a novella about like what happened to them and yeah things like that well we didn't find out about his family until later i feel like um so he he meant because she when they went to visit him at the prison yeah and he gives her like, is this the second time for- that he's visiting them she's visiting them yeah, because they went in the second book and then they go back in the third book. Oh, okay. Right. And he tells her about, like, because um, he can smell his sister on her or something. Oh, the weaver. That's right, because of the ring. Yeah. Yes. That's right. So that is mentioned. Um, yeah. And then his brother that's in the lake. Yeah. They also talk about, like, Nesta potentially, like, having the power of death or something. Oh, yes. I that was very interesting that she took from the cauldron. Yeah, but then they never really did anything with it. So. No. In my notes here, I've got Nesta and Elaine's reaction feels a bit overdone. Mm-hmm. Because Pharaoh went through the same thing, and they didn't slash don't care. Yes. I that annoyed me. Like I get that it's a big change and it happens. We all go through changes in life. Yes, we do. But the fact that they wouldn't even, like, she wouldn't even hear her out, that annoyed me. Yeah, Nessa's real bitchy. Yeah, but they finally had a common ground and she just wouldn't. Yeah, something they could kind of share. Yeah. Um, And then I have a note here saying, I hope that Elaine isn't actually crazy and just unable to control her new powers. Um, Her hearing has got to come into it somehow because I think she was, like, hearing things. And- yeah, I remember. But it did it. Mm. Yes. I, oh, okay. Okay. I totally remember that. <laughs> um, what else have I got here? Oh, I like that Feyre has to learn how to fly and that it's not just mag- some magical instinct. 
like oh i have wings now i can fly magic yes I also felt like they were just kind of shoving that in there for later in the book to explain when suddenly she needed to fly. Oh, okay. Which I kind of felt like that's what happened. Right. It did. It did happen that way. It didn't feel like that for me. It felt like more like real in this magical yeah. realm of fairies and magic. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's, that's pretty much all my thoughts on those, that bit. Oh, I've got Library Under the House of Wind, Creepy Thing in the Black Abyss. Feyre and Cassian go to the prison and speak to the Bone Carver, which we just talked about. And the Bone Carver <laughs> appears to her like Reese and Feyre's son. That was cool. Oh, yes. Uh, the Bone Carver wants the mirror, and he has a brother in the lake, and the sister is the weaver, and they're both more terrifying than him. And Amarin also came from the prison, and how did she escape? There's what they were trying to figure out. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay, well, that's all my notes up to the next set of chapters. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. Amarin explains that the bone carver will need to be bound to a body to be set free. Lucian tries to heal Elaine's mind with their mating bond. During flight training with Asriel, Feyre is not doing well. He tells her the story of how Novell saved Miriam, even though her wings were small and malformed. Hyben ravens attack Nesta and Feyre in the library. They pass by a strange pit where something evil lives. Feyre makes a bargain with the monster. It will kill the Hyben ravens if she will bring it company. They soon realize that Elaine has ma was made a seer in the cauldron. She tells them about another mortal queen that was sold to an evil lord. She is cursed and becomes a firebird every night. Lucian volunteers to find her. I love Lucian. I feel like he was underrated. Like he should have got a lot more screen time than what he got. I feel like it would have been interesting to have some chapters from his point of view as he's off searching. Yeah. Instead of just kind of. He does this whole noble search thing and then he just meets them on their way. It's like, oh, yeah. there you are. Let's go. <laughs> That I I feel like there are some bits towards the end that were a bit of a cop out. Yes, definitely. Which is like the the whole flying thing because Azriel tells her this story about Nafel. Yeah, and how she had the deformed wings, and you know they were parting the sea like Moses, and she flew in and saved this person. And I just feel like that's a way that was a way to set up so when Feyre needed to fly later on, and she could suddenly kind of do it yeah no yeah i agree oh so i want to i want to know what nesta took from the cauldron oh yes i like i need to know that and i hope that comes into her book maybe like the first chapter or something it goes through her going into the cauldron and what she sees and like what she experienced didn't she just take power i don't know isn't that how they kind of ended up rectifying all that because it's, it's all very vague it is well, what what chapters did we just read? Twenty eight to thirty four. Yeah, back to the night court. Oh, that's right. They were going to the night court, and yes. Lucian's brother Eris was there, and Reese betrayed more. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that caused a big rift. Yeah. Yes. And Pharaoh asks about the mirror, but no one can take it unless they face what's inside. And in parentheses, parentheses, I've got their fears because that's what I assumed you would face in a mirror. Yes. Yeah. You'd kind of like face, yeah, your own fears. Fantasy 101. <laughs> right. Come on, Farah. <laughs> Get with it. <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> um, Amarin says she escaped by accepting her mortality. And once she accepted it, she was able to just walk out in a bound to like a mortal body. So is that like, um, did she like take over somebody's mortal body or did she make her own mortal body? I think she made her own or became herself somehow. But she, she, I've also got a note here. It says she doesn't want them in quotes to know they didn't win. They didn't, I feel like that wasn't fleshed out a lot, but she was, she was very scared that they would find yeah. out that they didn't get to keep her in the prison. But some some things are so well explained and some things are just kind of skipped over. Yeah, and I can understand why they've had to be because otherwise this book would just go on and on and on. Yes. 
I really like that Lucian was kind of willing to step up and help. But yes. like I said before, it would have been nice to kind of get some, like his side of the story, like what, what he went through over there, whether that comes, like if he gets his own kind of book, whether that comes in kind of later, they give you more information. But I just I felt like it was a bit of a cop out just sending him off and then you don't hear from him for like 50 chapters. <laughs> mm. Well, I've got um, more notes. So many notes. <laughs> Love notes. I've got Nesta and Pharaoh go down into the library. Or oh, the ravens, which are hybern spies, mm-hmm. try to capture them. Pharaoh leads them to the bottom where they encounter a monster that is terrifying, should you lay eyes upon it. Da, da, da. Pharaoh makes a deal to save them. She has to bring the monster company to tell it tales of life. I thought that was kind of like, oh, that's sweet. So... Is the monster one of the like the bone carver's siblings? Is that what they were kind of getting at? I don't think so, because they said the other one was in the lake. Yeah, that's why I was because I thought the same thing too. Because the monster mentioned the mirror and the bone carver, mm-hmm. so I thought that maybe that would all kind of circle around, but it didn't. Um, um, we figured out that Elena's a seer. She tells them of another queen, the six who was sold to an unknown. Before the original meetings. That's right. So she's at the lake in the middle of vast mountains. I've got mm-hmm. Bone Carver's brother. It's all making Ooh. sense. Oh, I didn't even connect that. Yeah. There are others trapped as well. They're all birds by day and human by night. The others are white, but the queen is of flame. And I oh. was like, that's a throwback to the Swan Princess fairy tale. Oh, I love the Swan Princess. I didn't even think about that. Yes. So that's why I was I I really thought that that would get fleshed out a lot more. I'm sad that it didn't. No, but it reminded it me not. of another book that I've read by an author called Juliet Marillia, and her first mm-hmm. book is based on the Swan Princess fairy tale, and it was Ooh. very very good. So maybe we can add Princess. that to our TBR. Maybe I'll go and watch the movies again. <laughs> the, the cartoons They're so good. Yes. Oh dear. Hey, you watch Barbie movies. Don't you judge me. Um, uh, <laughs> it's been three days since I watched a Barbie movie. <laughs> you can't even blame it on the kids because you were watching them long before you had kids. <laughs> no, it wasn't me this time. I've already seen them all. <laughs> it's sad that I've also seen majority of them. <laughs> <laughs> you forced me to do it, I swear. <laughs> sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. All right, what are we All up right. to? 30, 35 to 41. Yeah. Okay. Hyben attacks the summer court. When the night court arrives, they find that no other aid has come and the court is being slaughtered. Moore and Feyre fight their way through the palace. Reese goes to the king of Hyben on his ships, but finds that the king is only an illusion. After the battle, Feyre meets with Tarquin, who is furious with her for stealing the book. That's it. Yeah. It was kind of, that was very fleshed out, the whole battle and everything. It was. It was very good. Mm. So I was very excited that um, Hyben was there and I was hoping that would kind of be the war bit and that it would be over and <laughs> we can get to like more like rebuilding because that would be more interesting. But no. No. Um, I realized then that the war is going to drag out and it's going to be a long long book and then my i didn't really have any many notes for this because it was it was kind of just about the battle yeah yeah so my other notes just summer court dude needs to get over himself right like they, they stole a book who cares oh, i have that as well <laughs> i said tarquin didn't kill them for the rubies but he still hasn't forgiven them what the fuck it wasn't yeah, that big a deal no especially like because they kind of had the chance to explain why they did it. It was for the good of everyone and yeah. it's just a dick. Yeah. And they still are thinking that it was all a ruse. Yeah. All right. Moving on. We're okay. jumping to Next. chapter 42 to 48. Okay. The night court meets with the high lords in the dawn court. To their relief, all came, even Baron and Tamlin. Tamlin continually insults Feyre. The High Lords agree that the Spring Court must be evacuated and that they must all take an antidote to protect their powers. Nesta believes they are in danger and warns Feyre that they need to return home. It is revealed that Lucian's father is Helion. 
A wave of power passes over the land, which means the cauldron has destroyed the wall. Nesta becomes sick as it happens. So I have a note here. I think that I didn't write down what the actual line was, but she said something. Feyre said something, and I've written, I feel like the last sentence of the chapter is kind of stolen from Riddick. Ooh. Um, it's probably said in a lot of books and movies. I know it's kind of in Lord of the Rings as well. Like um, when she kills one of the, what are they, the Nazareth? She's like, I'm, I am no man. But in Riddick, it's, Riddick, it's I bow to no man. Yes. Oh, yes. I do remember reading that too. Which, like, it's, I kind of like that it's kind of, if it is, if she has kind of grabbed it from other places, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe. Or it's plagiarism. It, yeah, it could be also. But considering how <laughs> much of it is, because you think you've got, you, we've mentioned Beauty and the Beast, we've mentioned the Storm Princess now, um, I've mentioned Robin Hood, we've mentioned Moses with the Parting of the Sea. That's There's true. There's obviously a, a lot of influence. There is. Which is cool. Um, I have another note. Um, if Reese could stop Tam- Tamlin talking for the rest of the book, that would be great. Okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, there was a lot of use of vomiting again. I don't oh, want to go yes. back to that, but I still hate the word. I have some general notes that we'll get to at the end that just are pet peeves of mine. Yes. Um, and then the wall's gone. Um, I don't really understand what the big deal was. There was holes in it anyway. They could all get through it. And then my question is, with the wall, because I, I never, whoops, I never went back and looked at the map. That's probably something I should have done. Well, I know but the map did now. the wall? Oh, good. Okay, maybe you can explain this to me. Yes. Did the wall go across the sea? No. So what was stopping them from taking ships and just going around the wall? Wait, maybe yes, it did. Because they talk about, like, the other continents. So was there a wall there as well? And was it one big line or is it like a circle? I also had lots of questions about this because when you look at the map, Mm -hmm. all right, picture... An island. Hold on. Oh, you're going to look at it? I'm going to Google it. It's literally layers like a cake. I was quite surprised. It's like the mortal realm. And then above that is the spring court. And then straight above that is autumn. And then winter. Yes. I was like, yeah. what? And then the night's the big one. Up the so. And what is the other continent? See, the wall, from the looks of it, the wall only covers the bottom it doesn't look like it goes at, oh actually no the wall goes across the mortal like the to the next continent oh so does it cover the sea because that's not there's no line there i well you would assume it would just keep going over the ocean okay well then there you go but... and it's like a tiny little island and then there's this whole big continent next door yes that we yes. don't hear from or speak of. And then there's all these different other countries. Fairy countries? So the map I'm looking at has like the high burn on the... On, in that little island. I'm looking at a map as well, yeah. In that little yeah, island. Yeah, so the left side. And then there's the big continent with like the lake. So I'm guessing that's where the fire fairy queen is. Not fire. The fire bird queen is. Yes. And the evil brother lake. monster. Yeah. So... But then they talk about, and we're probably getting ahead of ourselves, mm-hmm. they talk about worrying that Hyben's going to rally support from three other fairy countries or yeah. realms or they're not oh. courts. And then I was questioning whether, because the Night Court and the Spring Court and all those are part of Prithian. So mm-hmm. then is Prithian the continent and then the courts are like the countries? And if that's the case, is Hyben a country or a continent? And then is Hyben a continent that has these other countries on it? I got very confused in all of this. Maybe maybe it's like Australia, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> Just has states and territories. Uh, I did find there there is another map and maybe this goes back to because then like the her next series is kind of in the same world as this series. So maybe that's more about I hope so. Maybe we'll get more explanation for that later. That would be good. Um, Fira and Reeson go back to the prison. That's right. They went back again to see if the bone cover would take anything else. 
But he was like, yes. no, uh-uh, I want the mirror. You go get it for me. Yeah. And then I'm like, ah, oh, fuck you. And I left again. <laughs> Just leave me there, the rock. Yeah. The whole squad goes to the meeting except for Amarin. Um, I've got all the High Lords show up, including Tamlin, who is now a spiteful mm. asshole instead of just pathetic. And he says he's working against Hyben now, whereas before we thought we were wor- he was working with them. But I think all he's doing is working for himself. Yes, yeah. You can't trust him. He's literally a piece of shit. Yeah. So I've got the meeting went well. But the High Lords now know of Feyre's powers. We found out that Helion is Lucian's father, but they never yes. find out that. I was like, what even is the point? I know. Why bring it up if you're not going to reveal it at some point I- ever? I mean, maybe that comes up later in books. Maybe because I don't think Helion has any. No. Like. He has no offspring. Yeah. So maybe that comes up later. Feyre and. Amran have made a bargain with the beast in the library. Oh, it yeah. services in the war exchange for a window. <laughs> All he wants is someone to talk to. And a window. This monster. <laughs> I feel like we could be best friends. I think so. Just an he introvert. Just wants, just wants a window and someone to talk to. Mm. How nice is that? Um, and then I've got, they've obviously given up on the bone carver. Like, screw that guy. Yeah, it kind of felt like that. Yeah. All right, what's next? Um, 42 to 48. We just did that, didn't we? All right, 49 to yeah, 60. Yeah, so 49 to 60. Feyre and the others go to Grayson, Elaine's fiancé, and ask him to shelter humans. Durian arrives and tells everyone that he's actually a spy, and he's been trying to destroy <laughs> Hyben from the inside. He says that Hyben is planning to attack the following day from the summer court. Elaine's fiancé breaks up with her. There's a battle in the summer court and they put a glamour over the war camp so that they can ambush Hyben without their knowledge. Feyre realises that this isn't Hyben's true army and she goes to the Surreal for answers. The Surreal says that Nesta must nullify the cauldron. Before they can learn more, Iante and two Hyben soldiers shoot the Surreal. Feyre leads Iante and the guards inside the weaver's cottage and traps them there. Feyre sits with the Surreal as it dies. That was just sad. Like, leave... Uh- yeah. Leave it alone. I agree. It, the poor thing, like three books and every goddamn book, she comes and messes with it. Just leave it alone. And he's so kind to her. I know. Like, and all he <sighs> wanted was a better world. Oh, I do have a fun little note for you, a little throwback for you. Oh, yes. So um, I read the name of the thing in the hole. Mm-hmm. I read its name as Braxis. Okay. Which reminded me of a Braxis from Charmed. Oh, I don't remember Charmed. I know you're obsessed with it. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I love Charmed so much. Yay! I know, I know you do. <laughs> um, I haven't so I can't trust humans. That's just straight up can't trust them. I that, that was my whole <sighs> that whole thing with Durian felt like such a cop out. Yes, it really felt like. It was just a way to tie up loose ends quickly because the book was mm-hmm. getting too long. They they spent like three books saying that, you know, he was insane, this eye ring on the finger or whatever for so many years. Yeah. He's gone mad. For- yeah, and then suddenly he comes out and he's he's not insane. He, I don't remember what Tamlin did, but he's a piece of shit apparently. Yes, he is. And I hope he dies violently. He went back to Hyben. Oh, that's right, yeah. After saying that he wasn't going to. Yeah, and then, yeah, I have a note that Durian's good now. I don't know, man, that, this seems sus. Yes. So sus. So sus. All right, let me read what I've got here. I've got, I can't even think. I've got A, R, F, E, N, and M, go to the human fort. <laughs> <laughs> it must be Azriel, Reese, Feyre, Elaine, Nesta, and more go to the human fort. Yeah. Fiance now hates Elaine for being Faye. Durian is there, surprise, and has apparently been there on their <laughs> side all along. Oh god. He tells them that Hyben is planning to attack the summer attacks the summer court the following morning. And Azriel goes straight to tell Cassian to move their forces. Moore mm. joins the battle and F goes in search uh, F. <laughs> Feyre goes in search of the Surreal. So she tricked Moore. 
and was like, no, you go. They need your help. And then as soon as yes. more left, Faye was like, do, 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 I'm going to find the cereal. Bye. My question is, is he just following her around? Because he always seems to be close by. Well, he knows everything. So, yes, he's always there when she's <laughs> when he's needed. Ian has been tracking cereal with the coat. And she shows up with two soldiers who shoot arrows at cereal. Pharaoh draws them away by running straight to the weaver. That poor thing, I swear to God. That was probably the most horrible thing in the book for me is that, yeah, she got it killed after it helped her so many times. Yeah. But it was also the most satisfying death of Ian yes. and the weaver. Yes. That was kind of like a a nice way to kind of close the circle in that part of the story. Yes. Take it back to the weaver and let her feast. I'm I'm glad that that happened. 61 to 68 we're doing now. Mm-hmm. Nesta finds the cauldron, but accidentally opens a link to Elaine, and Hyben captures her. Pharaoh disguises herself as Iante to sneak into Hyben's camp to rescue Elaine. Azriel leaves with Elaine while Pharaoh tries to rescue an injured human. She finds trouble, but is saved by Tamlin. Hyben's final attack is coming, so they winnow as many humans away as they can. Pharaoh finally goes to retrieve the mirror for the bone carver. She takes it to him, but he tells her that he doesn't need it. He only wanted to see if Pharaoh was worthy. <laughs> Fucking bone carver. I know. <laughs> like, dude, um, stop it. So something that that didn't mention was that when she comes back after the, the what is it, the cereal? cereal? I keep saying, I read it as cereal, so. The cereal. <laughs> after that, yeah. <laughs> after, um. She goes back to the camp, like, Maul's really upset and cranky with her because she, like, lied to her, which I felt uh, like yeah. that was a bit over the top. Yeah, poor Maul. She's just mm. getting betrayed by everyone. I know. So they took Elaine. Um, so I felt like she wasn't exactly useful after her first lot of v- v- uh, visions. Yes. Not really a major loss. Yeah, well, yeah. Now she just wants to go back to her human boyfriend. Like, yeah. as if you would. <laughs> Um, I felt like after they rescued her and the three sisters were kind of back together, sleeping in the same bed again, that was kind of a nice little bonding moment. Yeah. They seemed to be healing. Yeah. Um, so they skipped over the mirror thing pretty quick. They did. It was just like, it was pretty much nothing. Yeah. All that build up for nothing. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. She just, she just grabbed it and saw herself and went, okay. And then took it to him and he was like, okay, don't actually need it, but whatever. Yeah. It was, yeah, that was... I didn't mind so much because the serial told her that she can only be broken if she chooses to be broken or whatever. But we d- didn't dwell on it as much as I thought we probably should have. No. Um, that night, the cauldron steals Elaine. Feyre and Azriel go after her. Azriel's hidden in the shadows and Feyre's disguised as Ian. And Durian helps. Yes. By getting the human. And then so does Tamlin. And they save a human and make it back to camp. And Feyre does her whole, I can fly moment, like Dumbo. Yeah. That was nice. This is this is what I was kind of talking about, yeah. is that they, they set it up so when she does need to fly, suddenly she can. Yeah. What a coincidence. But I think they also, yeah, <laughs> I think they also kind of explained it that, oh, Tamlin was also helping using like the wind to, yes. to help her fly a bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. Um, I've also got more comes out to Faye. Because she's lesbian. So she admits that she can never love Asriel. And Asriel seems to be getting closer to Elaine, even though she has the mating bond with Lucian. I know. It's so weird. I feel like that's a whole mess. That is a mess. Poor Asriel. That's all I can say. He just wants to be loved. But I also feel like that maybe he, like they should have been bonded and not Lucian. Yeah. No, I agree. But then I feel like Lucian deserves love. So I'm hoping that there's another one for Azriel. Yeah. Somebody's even better. But I, I feel like um He's gonna be lonely forever. I know, it's really sad because he's 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 he seems really nice. I thought he was gonna die. Oh really? Because because we hadn't heard like about any love interest for him. Or oh, more. Okay. So I was like, one of yeah. them is gonna die and not make it out the end of this book. And I'm questioning, where is Lucian and the Queen from the Lake? Will he bring the beast and tip the scales? Because I was like, come on, where's this lake beast, man? 
Yeah. All right. Let's read the rest of this and then we'll get to the rest of the notes. Okay. All right. The bone carver, Briaxis, and the weaver agree to join the battle. It doesn't look good until Tamlin, Baron, and Grayson come to their aid. The cauldron unleashes its power, killing Illyrian soldiers. Feyre's father and Dracon bring ships to fight against Hyben. Amran and Feyre race to the cauldron, but Amran betrays her. Nesta and Feyre find that the king of Hyben has their father. Cassian tries to save Nesta, but he is injured, and the king kills their father. Elaine then stabs the king, killing him. Amran claims to have betrayed the group to win her freedom. Feyre realizes that the cauldron must be restored and re-sacrifices himself to do it. The High Lords resurrect Recent, who then in turn saves Amran. Lucian returns from finding Vassa, the additional mortal queen. Feyre meets with Miriam and Draken and asks them to hide the cauldron on their island. She then calls a meeting to discuss a new treaty. And then they all return to Valaris. Hmm. I'll live happily ever after. Hmm. So yes, Frank Carver died. Very sad. I would have liked more, but hopefully, I don't know, give me a novella for backstory. I want to know more about him and his siblings. Yeah. Um, the the father returns, grand entrance, kind of explained why he was gone for so long, because they kept saying that he was, you know, at sea doing merchant stuff, but yeah, it felt like it had been months and months and months. I had to reread that paragraph a few times, because I was like, oh, really? what? What the what? <laughs> like, I how thought, did he know what was going on? And I thought that, like, their dad was a little bit... A coward? Not all there in the head. Yeah. You know, thought he was a bit of an idiot. Whether with, like, the glamour that Tamlin did originally, whether that kind of kicked him back in gear and that kind of, even though they broke the glamour, some of that stayed with him. I just... That's another thing that felt like a cop-out. This whole, mm. the whole, the dad finding the queen who then on their way back found Lucian, who appears to have done nothing. <laughs> and then they come. He's just like standing on the beach. Yeah. And it's just, just like, oh, that's, I was, I was reading through the book and I was worrying as we were getting towards the end because I could see like on my Kindle how many hours you've got left. Mm -hmm. and we weren't getting to the queen and the lake and the swan princesses and all these other things nope and i was like but why so i really 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 hope that that becomes a book it has to yeah that's what i mean if there is a book at, from like if it's like a lucian book hopefully they go back to his kind of point of view of what happens yeah with him and then that explains how they all kind of meet up and, but okay. I hate I hate reading books that have occurred during the setting of another book. Yeah. Um, the Fire Queen asks Feyre to find a way to break her curse, and that's kind of where they leave it. So I can see that becoming a whole new thing, a whole new book and yes. series or whatever. But yeah, I'm just sad that Lucian didn't get any credit for anything. No, he just turns up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I felt like like Reese sacrifices himself and they're just like, oh, it's fine. We'll just put our seat into him and he's good. Yeah. Just whatever. I knew that was going to happen. But yeah, it just felt like, okay, you've done. And, and he came back with only his own powers? How does that work? I know. It, yeah, it just felt like this huge dramatic moment that he's dead and they're just like, no, no, it's good. We, we're just going to bring him back now. Yeah. And then I've also got, aside from... Feyre's father, it appears everyone else survived. Yes. This this unsurvivable battle. Everyone survived. I was disappointed in that. Yes, everyone survived. Except for the bone carver. <laughs> yeah, but he got what he wanted in the end. Yeah. Death is what he wanted. <laughs> I, I felt like it was, the ending was just like it was the easy way out. It, it did feel everyone like that. Everyone lives. Tamlin's apparently over his heartache as well. Um, the super hidden people take the cauldron yeah it just felt it felt very lacking yeah everyone it, it, it's it's a happy ending for not a happy story yes. no i i can't imagine how as an author it would be very very difficult to kill off 
a character that you've put a lot of heart into. Yes. But it should have been done. Yeah. I Like, I think as well, um, like, a lot of the characters that people love, like, there's not a lot of information about them as well. So if you were to kill them off too soon. It would have been forgiven. Unpopular opinion. Mm. Mm-hmm. Asriel should Love have died. It. I feel like I agree because I feel like he's going to become. It's, he's going to become like a problem later. Monster with cats. <laughs> <laughs> just lots of cats. Yeah, I mean, maybe he finds someone. Maybe he just. But apparently, um, she said that everyone's kind of we've met all the future love interests. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. Unless Azriel. Although they put emphasis on the Frost Queen's sister. Mm-hmm. That was mentioned for no reason. Yeah. And I think the novella is about them. So maybe she gets more airtime in that. And then that could be Azriel's Potentially. Match. And apparently there's, um, in the novella, there's new characters introduced that play parts in the fourth book as well. Oh, okay. So maybe they're saying, because we haven't read the novella yet, maybe no, they're saying. I don't even know what it's there, about, but... apart from the fact that it's called Frost and Stars or it's something. It's about the winters? Yeah. Like her planning that. her first event as the High Lady or something? I don't know. Oh. Oh. It's like a fluff piece, pretty much. Oh. Is this like reading Bridgerton? <laughs> I, I think it's just meant to be a nice book to get you to the next one <laughs> which is a beast have you seen it it's yeah it's bigger than the one we just read and apparently the font is smaller oh, fuck. and i bought it in a paperback oh did you i did it's coming tomorrow oh god yay oh it's gonna take me so long to read it so do you have any like Overall thoughts that you want to add? I did. Pet peeves. Mm-hmm. Why do the men keep getting referred to as males? Yeah. Again, the the fairies are a level above humans, right? Mm-hmm. But that's what you would refer to animal sexes as. Yes. Males and females. Because they can't be men and women because men and women are humans. Yes. But I feel like with, with this book, they kind of they she's written them less like animalistic yeah except compared to males like the first one yes they did get more civilized yes although this is the last note that i have mm-hmm. and it's what's with all the vulgar gestures that got <laughs> so annoying <laughs> this one's doing a vulgar gesture the only vulgar gesture that i know of is sticking your finger up at someone or poking your tongue out. Is that really what they're doing? Why wouldn't you just say, like, flip the middle finger or something? Yeah, flip them off. And so the same vulgar gesture. And, and it was Unless over it... and over and over again. Everyone has given mm-hmm. everyone a vulgar gesture at least ten times. <laughs> the fairies, they're very vulgar. Like, but it, it was, it it's just weird. felt too childish and immature for what they had going on yes that kind of goes back to like the vomiting it's just like an overuse of a certain phrase yeah i noticed that after we spoke about it last time i noticed it a lot yes and i was yeah. like oh, every time i read the word vomit Bella's gonna be pissed at this oh <laughs> vomiting again stop vomiting <laughs> <laughs> they've got tablets for that yeah. <laughs> i felt like overall just kind of especially after the second book just kind of disappointed I also, oh, mm, not dis- I'm confused and I feel like there are a lot of easy way outs taken. Yeah. But like with the, the second book, after I finished it, like I could not wait. Mm, I remember. To talk to you about it. Yeah. Because the ending was just like, holy fuck. And then this one, I'm just like. I can't even remember know, the ending. You just, yeah. You read it at your own pace. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, it just didn't have, and I guess that's because it's kind of ending a trilogy at the same time, but yeah, still, like, there could have been, like, some big climactic thing, which I don't think there was. I think it was, yeah, just a lot of easy way outs. Yeah, and it, and it felt like sh- 
she tried to do that big climactic ending, but it ended up being too many loose threads mm -hmm. that she was hastily trying to tie up. So it took away from the, the, oh my God moments. Yeah. And that was sad. Yes. But it, I still feel like it was a good book. It, mm, it probably should have been two books, maybe. I'm I'm kind of disappointed there wasn't more of her, like, in the spring court, kind of. Yeah, that was over very fast, and she, yeah. Mm, that was very quick. And I was like, oh, we're done? We're done with that? Okay. Yeah. I feel like that could have been a bit more bulky. Maybe yeah. that could have been a book, and then, then her going back could have been a book. Yeah. Do you want to do some reviews? Yes, I have one. Are you ready? I have, yes. Go. This is a one-star review. Oh, I love it. Okay. 202. That's the number of times that the word mate in any of its hellish forms is used in this book. 202. Okay. Um, I have, okay, so I have eight things I hated about A Court of Wings and Ruin. <laughs> uh. So, um, Feyre is still the biggest special snowflake. <laughs> Um, so she learns to fight and, and to fly and harness her fey powers as easily and swiftly as the next person. Um, so I think they're saying that like her special status is just like kind of like an easy way as well to again like back to that flying because mm -hmm. she's so special. She learned to fly so quick. Um, so there's uh, not a few pages will go by where she will remind you of how strong, powerful, and strong and um, powerful she is. <laughs> And then apparently they have a grime with um, how many bad sex scenes there were. Oh, yes. So um, many. Not only do they have sex, but they seem to have the greatest sex in the world every, every single time. Every single happens. time. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, not only does every single scene end in earth-shattering convulsions for both of them, <laughs> <laughs> but it just seems so grotesque. <laughs> Wing stroking, neck grazing, bed thumping. <laughs> Oh dear. I kind of, I have to agree with that. Yeah, it same. It was just like a bit over the top. With the I ended scene. up skimming the sex scenes. I was like, because they're all just the same. It's like, yeah. okay, we get it. Ma, yeah, you guys, move on. You know, you rock each other's world. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Your turn. All right. This is, let's laugh at dumb things. For example, this passage, <laughs> Feyre and Reese and are apart, blah, blah, blah. It's the tragedy of the century or millennium since these boring ass people live for infinity because there's no justice in this world. Unsurprisingly, they use their mind control powers for a saintly motivation, sexting, which is already <laughs> so hilarious, but it gets even better because I sent back an image of me sticking out my tongue at him. <gasps> my clothes were back on when his answer arrived. Like mine, it was wordless, a mere image. Like mine, Reason's tongue was out, but it was occupied with doing something else. <laughs> I chose to interpret this statement the same way a middle schooler interprets the existence of a performer, Marilyn Manson, based on a shady rumour he once heard about a surgery to remove three ribs. I believe that this is incontrovertible evidence that Reason can suck his own dick. Oh, what else could he possibly that? be doing? What could it possibly be <laughs> occupied with? <gasps> oh. <laughs> See, I thought he sent back a like an image of him doing stuff to her. Right. That's what but I thought that, too. But now it's like, hang on a second. Into like Marilyn Manson shit here. <laughs> <gasps> oh dear. I love it. Oh, there's so much. I didn't think it was that bad, and I didn't draw the Marilyn Manson comparison. No, but that but was now hilarious. It's in my head, you it's, can't it's there. <laughs> oh, poor Reese. Um, so I've got one. Um, the mating bond is just a bad excuse for poss possessiveness. Um, I've oh. always had a problem with the concept concept of mating bond, which is pretty much like finding your one and only soulmate. If the mating bond is so incredibly rare, why then why does every single person in the inner circle, save for a few, have a mate? Um, while these fey males are already possessive and overprotective, let's just add in a mating bond to make them utterly insufferable. <laughs> this mating bond is just a bad excuse for them to lay claim over females because they're mated. Uh, yeah. Oh, in the case of Lucian and Elaine, I was so disgusted with the way the mating bond was used to try and create some conflict between them. 
In fact, Pharaoh uses the mating bond as an excuse to shove Lucian in, Elaine's, um, in front of Elaine. Her sister, who happens to be depressed and ill just because he's her mate, completely disregarding her mental state and also her own wishes. Oh. As Elaine is betrothed to some some other human. I don't think it was that deep, guys. No, no. <laughs> oh, that was a bit harsh. Because they was, were doing yeah. that to try and get her back. Yes. From her own mind. It was just happened to be so handy that there was someone with a mating bond there. Yeah, exactly. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right. One more bad review and then let's read some good ones because I feel like okay. we've shit on it a bit much. <laughs> okay. This is from Cindy. She rated it two stars and she says, maybe I'm on crack, but I was surprised to find this book better than the first two. The pacing was better. The side characters had more roles and personality. And I appreciate that Farrah and Reason were depicted as a power couple that were both supporting and challenging each other. That being said, the writing is still a hot mess, but at least it was kind of funny. I.e. the excessive use of mating bonds, the random gay monologue at the end, and the haphazardly rushed conclusion. That's kind of how I feel. But I don't think it was better yes. than the second one. No. I don't think the writing was that bad. And I didn't think it was... Well, now that I think about it, it's hilarious. The mating bonds and all that kind of stuff. The, yes. the random gay monologue where more came out as lesbian, that was unnecessary. Yeah, I feel like that was just um, just kind of pushed in there. It, 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 it didn't feel like it fitted properly. No, because... And it could have been amazing. But also there's nothing to say um, that, like, at no point do they say that, like, the fairies are, you know... Conservative. I don't know what the word is. Yeah, like the, you know, it has to be a male or female or whatever. And in it's fact... It's not really implied. goes to the other thing that, like, someone... There was a female that's mated with another female. And there's mm. a guy that his partner is a guy. Yeah. Like, and, and it's not a thing. Like, it doesn't matter. And it shouldn't matter. But it, No. And I was reading that going, why, why is this such a big deal for her when it doesn't seem to matter in the rest of the realms? And then yes. they went on to explain that it was her family that would have had the problem because the females need to bear children, blah, blah, blah. But it was it was just not necessary. No. Maybe had is. more got her own book than you could have explored it there. But it felt rushed and chucked in there as like a last-ditch effort for a random gay monologue. All right. Oh, let's God. get some good reviews. Read me, read me some good ones. Okay. Karum rated it five stars. Words fail me, he says. I've always been more of a fan of the Throne of Glass series, but I think this is her best book so far. This book just has everything. Great characters, great story, secrets, betrayals, redemptions, action. You name it, it's here. 700 pages and not a line wasted. Hell, I would have been happy with another 700 pages of this standard. The characters are great, but there is such great character development. No one is one-dimensional. The characters are conflicted and complex with their own strengths and issues. Every time I learn something about one of the characters, I want to know more. I agree. Every character had their moment to shine, and every character in this book could very easily star in their own book. That is the depth of the character in this story, especially recent and anyone in Court of Dreams. I agree, and I think that's our biggest irk, is that the characters didn't get fleshed out as much as what we wanted, because yes. they were so good. Uh, yeah, I always wanted more. Like Again, going back to Lucian, he could have... Like, what the fuck was he doing for half the book? Yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. I I appreciate a book that leaves you wanting more, but it annoys me that we're not going to get it. Mm. I I think this book is three and a half stars out of five. Three and a half? I think the ending was very... Messy. Because it was so, yes. And it was just easy way out, easy way out, easy way out. That kind of let let it down a fair bit i agree there was so much build up and then it was just like over in five chapters yeah it didn't nicely wrapped up to me it didn't feel like a let down it just felt like a mess mm -hmm. like she was scrambling to finish the book because holy crap we're already at seven pages 700 pages yes i i would also like to give it three and a half because we gave the last mm -hmm. book five stars. Yes. But I want to demote the first book down to two stars. I feel I think we gave it three and I want it to be two. 
I, I can agree with that. I think it's absolutely trash compared to the second and third book. Yes. I think the second book out of the trilogy is just by far the best. Yes. It's so well done, especially the ending. And the third one, it's it goes really well. And then I just, yeah, the ending just wasn't wasn't really it for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with that. So we've got two stars and five stars and then three and a half stars. All righty. Are we ready to wrap up? Um, yeah. We'll come back next week with the novella, right? And then we'll move on to the Beastie book. Yeah. So next, uh, so next week we'll be reading the Court of Frost and Starlight, which is the, yeah, the novella, the bridge between the third and the fourth. Um, quick and easy. So we'll see how that goes. You might have to put in some extra thoughts. Um, feel free to send us your thoughts via email or Twitter. Um, links will be in the show notes um, and we may include them in the next episode if they come through in time. Yeah. Otherwise, happy reading. And see you all next time. Bye-bye.